Hello, and welcome to the Casino Tears podcast. I'm one of your hosts, 10 Ton is number one, and joining me as my co-host is the one and only Ed Robinson from Roll to Win Craps. If you want more info on our show, please visit our page at casinotears.com. On this week's show, we discuss Biloxi, the opening weekend of crap season, ideal show sponsors, some basic terms and concepts for beginners. We also touch on frosty ponies, dice combos, dominant numbers, horseshoes, drinking at the table, and the birth of a great merch idea. Ed. You want to hear the cork pop? Yeah, let's do it, man. It's good seeing you. I haven't seen you in a, in a it seems like forever. I know it's been a while. I, I've been, I've been camping out in, in craps land, hunting craps. We have a lot to talk about today. And, and, and I'm going to toast as I get this cork out. Oh, we're doing a nice little toast. Yeah. And so I'm toasting with Deadwood presents Tumbling Dice Whiskey. Tumbling Dice. That's our perfect ideal sponsor if it tastes good it is it would it would be because you know what i think i like it already because i can smell it what's the proof on that thing it's got it's got rye in it it's a hundred proof it's right in my wheelhouse <laughs> oh yeah that is right in my wheelhouse that is a man's now is that that's bourbon it is bourbon yeah it is bourbon it, but it's got right it's got a rye mash in it so i like the taste of it. i like a rye i like a good rye but this is still bourbon. It's not a it's not a rye whiskey, but it's got a rye mash in it. Cheers. To what? To a successful opening day and weekend of crap season. Man. Yeah, man. I heard you bagged a lot of them. We bagged a lot of them. And you know what's interesting about bagging craps? Tell me. They have this place on the other end of the casino and it's got these cage, it's got like these jail cell bars on it. Yeah, you go and put them in there. Uh, they call them the cage and you go in there and you put them in there and you can sell them. <laughs> You can sell them and they give you, they give you money for them. Uh, I mean, it's like amazing. You walked out with a lot of pelts, didn't you, this weekend? Yeah, and a mouthful of feathers, but that's a different story. Yeah. <laughs> so that bourbon, we need to get, I'm going to write him a letter. Let's, we're going to get them as our sponsor. That's the ideal sponsor. I mean, Tumble and Dice. I'll be happy to promote it. And we're going to get them. And it'll be interesting to see who our first sponsor is. Will it be Tumble and Dice? Will it be... I want Miller High Life as our beer. Yeah, but that's for the children that watch. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, you know, if I had to, if I had to drink Miller Light, I probably could. I mean, it might bring back some memories, right? I'll tell you what. I'll drink Miller if they only give me ponies. Yeah, ponies, man. Because you can chill those things in the freezer down to 30 degrees, and they'll have little ice crystals in them when you pop the top. Yeah, frosty ponies. Yeah, frosty ponies. Ed, so before we dive deep into your weekend, and it was exciting, I was living vicariously through you because you were texting me updates, probably so you wouldn't forget. The whole reason I was sending you stuff was so you would have it, so I wouldn't forget about it. We should touch on some terms. Can I just start rattling them off to you? Yeah, I mean, are you going to answer your own question or have I got to answer it? You're going to, here we go. You ready? Yeah. This is for the beginners, okay? Okay. We keep talking about, this is a good one sets we talk about sets all the time mm -hmm. and this came in from uh this question was actually asked by rob who by the way after listening to this last episode he texted me and he was like my handle is cosmo <laughs> <laughs> he's got his own handle now yeah, yeah he made his own handle which is good all right Cos cosmo it is is that like a universe cosmo or is that like <laughs> is that like vodka and uh uh, the drink my wife drinks. I don't know. I don't know. But like it, it, these are open for interpretation, right? A lot of them. But set. Mm -hmm. Set is. Set is easy. When we talk about sets, we're talking about the facial uh, matching that we're doing. A preset, if you will, before we toss the dice. It could be threes on top. Could be whatever. Whatever combination you're using on the dice front and tops. Yeah. 3V, a 3V is a set. You've got threes making a V on top. It's a real popular set. People don't really understand how many there are ways to make those three Vs, but, uh, there's, you know, three, one, three, three, five. So in its most simplistic term, when you're looking at the dice for dice together, you're reading left top left facing you then right top, right facing you. So if you have- Yeah, you can have a three, two, three, six, three, six, three, two, three, one, three, five, on and on and on. 
I mean, most people, most people don't really understand that the opposite side of each face of a dice equals a seven to the one that you're looking at. So the three, if you're looking at a three, the opposite side of the dice is a four because each, that's the way they're made. I mean, each, each dice, if correctly made, each, each opposite face equals seven, six and ones, six and ones are on opposite side, fives and twos, threes and fours. And that was an epiphany for me when I actually realized that. <laughs> it is for a lot of people. Cause you see people picking them up and they're like spinning them around in their fingers, like a top trying to figure out where the two is. And you know, they're staring at the five. It's just on the other side. Yeah. The opposite sides make seven. And then you read them mm -hmm. top left. Facing left. That's the way I do it. And it's kind of, it's kind of grown into the more, more conventional way of doing it. Yeah. They used to set them, they used to call them out by the, I don't know, I'm getting way into the weeds here, but by the axis numbers of the die instead of the face. Like that's just too, that's where well, it's too deep. We need, yep. we need the weed whacker yep. to get out of here. You know how many combinations of dice sets there are Okay. out of one pair of dice? Yeah. I'm going to get this wrong. And this is, I should know this. What is it? What do you think it is? Fucking uh, 732. No, it's not quite that many. What is it? This is a math question. Yeah. <laughs> Ed, so listen, when I was in college, anything that had to do with math, even though econ was, I guess you'd say math adjacent. There's 576 different combinations oh. of sets. Okay. That's a lot. And, and that That's mind boggling was to me. That was my first epiphany with dice was there were that many. I was over if that was the price is right. Mm -hmm. It was over. You lose the price. No. Yes. So well, listen, all anything related when I was in college, I had, you know, stat, uh, statistics and econ. I actually scheduled classes over top of them at the same time. Cause then you could just basically your grade was the final. So I actually took, like, I booked two classes at the same time. You could appreciate, I feel like you would appreciate that. Only two? That I was actually in an Italian class, Italian cinema class, while my econ class was going on. I can appreciate that. Yeah, man. And then I did the same thing for another one with statistics. And you just had to, you know, pass the final. Did, yeah. Did you pass? Of course I did. Of course okay. I just, just I, I got I got a B minus and a C. And those are my worst grades, obviously. Well, if you're not in the class, it's kind of hard to make a good grade. It's amazing, though. That is, that you, yeah. So, okay. Next, box numbers. Go ahead. Box numbers. Yep. Those are the numbers at the top of the layout that's, that's close to the dealers. Those are the numbers. Four, five, six, eight, nine, and ten. Yep. Basic version. Okay, grip. That's, that's the way you grip the dice before you toss them. Not, that's not, it's not, a grip is not picking them up and shaking them in your hand. That's just flinging the dice. That's not, that's not a grip. That's no grip. That's no grip. Dark side. Dark side, simply put, is betting uh, that a seven will roll before the next number or before the point is, is, uh, made the point is the first roll of the dice that would be a box number out there somewhere and you're betting against you're kind of you're not really betting against the shooter but you're betting against the fact that he'll roll that, that he or she will roll a seven instead of that number dark side betters are viewed in a very I, I wouldn't you say they're viewed in a negative light for the most part oh yeah it's got a negative connotation for sure yeah everybody feels like they're betting against the shooter yes and in essence in essence they kind of are but you know they're there to make money i'm there to make money they need to be careful and the, and there's an art we're gonna we're by the way with all of these these basic terms we're gonna have episodes devoted to each one of these because we can dive into these sure I mean, very deeply. Ed, bonus bet, simply put, is what? Uh, it is a bet that has this a high, high payout, which means it's hard to hit, obviously. And you're betting that you can roll all of the numbers that are possible to roll before you can roll a seven. So that would be two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. And when you hit that, it is... An amazing feeling when you hit that bet. Well, they break it up. They break it up into three different bets. They have the the small side, which is two, three, four, five, and six, 
They have the high side. Some people call it the tall side, which would be 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. And each of those will either pay 30 to 1 or 30, what is it, 34 to 1? Most of them now are 30 to 1. 30 to 1 now. And may, if you do them all, that's 150 to 1. And let's say you, you hit the small, right? Yeah, with $5 on it, you make 150 plus you get your 5 back. So and if you end up hitting the tall, you automatically are hitting, are making them all. Yes. So yeah. you're hitting a 30 to one bet and then 150 to one. Yeah. It's a super, super exciting, but it's, it's probably one of the most thrilling experiences mm -hmm. for me yeah. at, at the craps table. That's the bonus. And then final one today, Ed. Okay. Okay. You mentioned toss books, which I've never heard actually. Sounds a bit risque, but I want to hear. I want to hear it. What is the toss book? Toss book. Uh, when I said that, I was talking about uh, seeing someone else's toss books, right? Yeah. Probably Irish. Yeah. I keep my I keep a set of books on all my tosses here at home. So ba that's basically a detailed a detailed chart. Well, I use a yeah, call it a chart. So for anyone that's that starts getting into dice setting, you are going to end up tracking. The, your roles, tracking the sets. It's part of learning your advantage. If you have one, if you have an advantage, you can find it with the proper set and you'll know what numbers you're most likely to hit with that set based on your individual toss. Dominant numbers that you would hit. Yeah, you, everybody's got a dominant number or two. It will vary sometimes from table to table. So that's why I always say, I'm, am, I, am I hitting what I expect or am I getting a different number? And all on these terms, set, grip, toss, all this falls under the uh, DI subject heading, yeah, which would be dice influence, which is highly, highly, uh, I'd say hotly contested. Well, that's a controversial topic. Yes, yes. The believers and non-believers in craps. But if it weren't possible, they wouldn't put those pyramids back there to kind of randomize the dice. Yep, for sure. Oh, Ed, you know what? Speaking of... Cosmo, he had a very interesting comment when we, we had this conversation about dice sets. He said that it reminded, he was like, ask Ed if he knows or if he's ever played horseshoes. Oh yeah, I grew up playing horseshoes. That's what he said. He, he's like, I bet Ed really knows about this because he, him and his father would play with horseshoes and he's like, it kind of reminds me of like how they would throw horseshoes. Yeah, professional horseshoe, you know, those horseshoe tossers guys, they, you know, they all have a particular way they hold it, the grip of the horseshoe, uh, you know, and then they've got a certain spin they put on it when they release it, just like a bowler actually has a different spin. So yeah, so it's like horseshoes, except it makes you set, you make more money. When's the last time you played horseshoes, dude? A long time ago, probably with my kids when they were young. So I was curious about Biloxi. When you were going there, you actually, that was really cool. You FaceTimed me, and while you were driving, you were showing me right when you were getting off the highway and crossing over, like, the bay, right? Is it yeah. a bay? Yeah, that's I-110 that's I right there. As you're coming over the bridge, just as your hair is starting to stand up on the back of your neck as you're crossing the bay. Nice, excited. It's happening. Yeah, and here's the good thing. When you're crossing that bridge, you can see the... The Gulf of Mexico straight ahead, right behind all the casinos. Oh, nice. It makes you feel so good. Yeah, Ed, I love that picture. It makes you feel like a cold hog rolling around in warm mud, man. I mean, it's awesome. Heading into Biloxi, huh? It's like a cold hog in warm mud. There's nothing better. Let's get into it, man. Biloxi, set the stage, dude. Thursday, you drove down. Drove down, met up with... Uh, Heavy gargoyle and 220 inside. Nice, dude. Nice. All the guys we mentioned with the with the handles, dude. Yeah, they were there, and we, we all met up, stayed at the same place, had a great, great dinner at the Half Shell Oyster House, The and the place was packed. There was a, <laughs> it was kind of funny, a mental health <laughs> meeting going on, a convention or something going on there. Were you staying at Hard Rock? I didn't even play. We didn't even play. Yeah, I was at the Hard Rock. I didn't even the Hard Rock was was just really packed, and you know, an advantage an advantage player doesn't play where he might not have the advantage. So, you know, we walked up to uh, the Beau Rivage next door, 
there was an open table and what are crafts players going to do? We're going to throw, we're going to scout. Yes. You were scouting. We were scouting and, and tossing. We, we each threw two times and then we colored up and left. Whoa. That was yeah. quick. And didn't even play anymore. That's it. I mean, that's, that's quick. Well, it was after dinner starting to get late and we had plans to meet about six 30 in the morning when the tables were empty. Pretty mellow night Friday. Yeah. We, we shot some craps Friday morning. Oh, nice. We bagged them babies. I think I sent you a, a memo on that. <laughs> Friday was when I was getting the updates that you were with 220 inside yep. CBK and rock. Uh, yeah. CBK rock. Okay. Yeah. CBK colorblind kid. Colorblind kid. Yeah. That's his handle. He, he's colorblind. Yeah, he's probably listening. He's probably mad now, but that is a great one. <laughs> he picked it. Well, we call it, we call him that CBK. He is colorblind. CBK. Yeah. I was playing with him a couple of three years ago. I didn't know it was colorblind. I told him to take $30 out of his rack so that he could hand it to the dealer to press his uh six from 180 to 420 with that extra 30 dollars and he handed the, he handed the dealer two red chips he can't tell the difference between red and green that's a problem yeah so i spent part of my weekend just keeping his chips organized a little bit friday night you ended up playing crapless i did we were shooting good craps they were fat and happy when we shot them i went to the crapless table 220 inside followed me over there this lady came up, came up and, and, and kind of pushed the guy that was beside me out of the way, pushed him on further down. And she says, oh, I love crapless craps. And so I'm like, okay, this will be fun. See, see what she can do. And I had a decent role. She had a decent role. And so then the guy that, that she had pushed down, he was like a regular local guy. Goes there a lot. And he, he turned in, he, 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 he tossed an amazingly long roll. I mean, as soon as I placed the two, three and 11 and 12, he hit, he hit three twos. All right. So that pays six to one and it was a $25 minimum table. So $25 wins 150, three and 11 pays three to one on a crapless table. All right. So he had a bunch of threes. He had a bunch of 11s, a bunch of other box numbers, and he never threw a 12. He threw for a long time, at least an hour, if not longer. Oh, wow. And the girl was going, she started chanting two, three, 11, 12, two, three, like a cheerleader. <laughs> yeah. And she poked me in the shoulder and she said, come on, get with it, old man. And so me and her started cheering together. We, we were just sitting there dancing and singing two, three, 11, 12, every time the dice came out until he started to throw. Nice. Nice. It kind of kept, it kept the mantra of the table just really positive and going. Yeah. I was afraid to break it. I had to keep doing it because it was working. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love, uh, crapless is nice when you get those, uh, when you get those extremes, extremes, by the way, are the out super, super outside numbers, the two, three, 11, 12, yep. your horn numbers essentially. Yeah. And Ed, man, I like getting those, those babies up to a hundred. Man, I went from $25 to fifty dollars to a hundred on the two, which will pay. That's going to pay six hundred. Yeah, and then I went from twenty five on the three and eleven. Twenty five, fifty, one hundred, one fifty. I think is what I had on it. Oh, nice! You got that up to one fifty. Nice. Oh, I'm not going to stop. Every time it hits, I'm going to press it. Those are juicy. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, he he was hitting. I mean, he threw for uh, for a long time. Long, long time. No bonus, huh? No, uh, there's no bonus bets there. No bonus bets. Uh, and you were at Hard Rock, correct? Yeah, yeah. They do not have bonus bets on the table. You earn everything you take off of those tables. Old school. Yeah, yeah. But you know what keeps the game moving? It keeps a lot of bottom fishers out of the off the tables. People that'll just come in and play for that reason and that reason only. So a lot of people don't play there because it doesn't. But it changes the game a little bit. I mean, it's old school. Yeah, it is. Ed, let me ask you something though, quick. When you yeah. on on Friday, the table minimum there, and then what are you buying in for? That was a twenty five dollar minimum crapless, twenty five dollar minimum bet, and I think I bought in with it's either a thousand, maybe just call it a thousand dollars, maybe. Yeah, not a lot. That's pretty skinny. That's a pretty skinny play. Yeah, but still. 
you you got fat off the skinny play. If you got if you get if you if you buy in for it, you might lose it. So but you know, one of my rules is never walk away without a chip in my hand. So I don't wanna I don't wanna be I don't wanna get drunk and get stupid or something. You're drinking at the table. Yeah, <laughs> obviously. No. I didn't really drink at the table. Do you have a drink when you go up to a table? Do you just or do you have a drink in your hand or are you ordering one when you're playing? Depends on what what I walked out of the VIP lounge with. If I walk out of there with a good bourbon, I'm not going to leave it. I'm going to take it. Yeah. You know, I drink a lot of water yeah. at the tables. Do you think that uh, that alcohol has influenced <laughs> your play ever in a bad way? Because I know it has mine. I know it has mine. Well, it's easy for it to influence you in a bad way. Well, yeah. Sometimes it'll, sometimes it'll influence you in a good way. <laughs> How so? Well, I mean, if you're uh, nervous. Yep uptight a drink will settle your nerves sometimes right just, yeah you, need to, you just need to know when to cut the spigot off yeah it'll take the edge off yeah uh, when i was a musician i religiously used to have two shots up there and a beer and that would last me for the whole show and it would be a perfect cruising altitude the the problem is one shot of tequila is like multiple shots <laughs> in a normal world and then you've had four and then you're just fast and loose mm -hmm. with the bets and then things could go from bad to worse quickly. Yeah, you know, I'll order I'll order a, a bourbon on the rocks. All right. So that that gets you yep. some water mixed in there with it. And then I'll order a, a glass of water. Yep. Or a bottle of water. Nice. Maybe. Smart. Saturday. In the updates that came to me yeah. over that weekend. Yeah. Did you have a did you really truly have a I'm gonna remind you of this. Okay. But did you have a uh somewhat of a Burt Reynolds? moment which i said <laughs> did people recognize you right you had yeah they did yeah that happened yeah saturday i told you ed burt reynolds of crafts man i'm talking to him if i'm wearing my hat iconic i get spotted real quick but i throw well in that hat. yep it keeps the glare off my eyes from the overhead lights in the casino yeah so you don't have to wear like pine tar <laughs> underneath your eyes yeah i don't have to look like a football player i can just wear i look like look like burt riddle so wait, so people from north carolina right recognized you yeah there was a, a lady and her daughter drove down and ran into me and gargoyle and gargoyle's a nice 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 guy nice guy and we ended up going and having coffee and ice cream or something with them i don't know her husband's a fan a fan and uh, of of the channel of the of the YouTube channel and they were down there for like this ladies trip girls trip whatever but he had given them instructions to go find Ed and they found Ed and Gargoyle and so we sat down and had two for one two for one they found you both they found us both and we gave them you know collectors chips and that kind of thing uh, but what about picture you get picture taken they wanted selfie yes yes Ed, Ed. did the selfie thing and all that stuff Ed. it's like you know back in the days when i'd sign autographs that's awesome did you sign anything sign the chips oh nice man yeah had a little silver a little <laughs> silver uh sharpie pretty soon you're gonna <laughs> You're going to have someone there take out your little, like, headshot, sign it. Yeah. It'd be uh, amazing. It was kind of fun. I mean, it's, it's really weird. I got to tell you, though, it's really weird when that happens because that's not how I perceive myself at all. No, but, uh, Ed, we got to uh, do a quick merch announcement for the month of March, okay? Yeah, yeah. We're going to have a different theme. I don't know how it's going to work out, but obviously we had the Valentine's Day heart on off heart mug which was yeah, beautiful and it was a lot of people loved that one. Oh, really yeah i love how you get this feedback and and i do i do get this feedback got to share that feedback i love hearing that just here's a, here's a, here's another here's another modern day handle for you okay hit me justice jen justice jen yeah nice yeah, Justice Jen, she loved the heart, and then she heard we were going to have a shamrock. <laughs> no, well, Ed, you just gave it away. Okay, listen, <laughs> Justice Jen, yeah. I like that. Yeah, We need to dive into that nickname or that handle. Where did justice come from? Well, it's a legal term. She's not a judge. She's an attorney. I like handles that have the same letter, like the Mudslide Max and the Justice Jen and the 10 Ton. Yeah. Yeah. So she's JJ. I like that. Justice Jen. Yeah. Since this show is going to come out first week of March, we've got the 
special on off St. Patrick's Day shamrock mug or lucky clover. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 Justice Jan Wolf won. Oh, she wants yeah. Hell yeah. The, you know the heart mug goes off our site. Yeah, the heart mug, the heart mug is gone today. We'll put it back up on pre-sale next January, Ed. A little before. Yeah. Yeah. They're gonna become collectors items, man. These oh, there's no doubt. But yeah, Justice Jen, you got we got to get the shamrock up for her. Did she ever come out to Vegas? What part of the country is she in? Uh, she's in your neck of the woods. We should put this out there, though. I would love to meet anyone since I'm in Vegas all the time. Anyone, let me know. Yeah. Let's go play. You got to come out here, Ed. Got to come out here. August, You what is that? August, maybe? August, September, somewhere in there. Man, dog days. Dog days of summer, man. It's hot. Yeah. It'll be awesome. The tables will be hot. Yeah. Heat them up even more. Yeah. Burn them down. I mean, you know, because then you're about midway through crap season. <laughs> That's true. Crap season, I learned this. Crap season ends around Thanksgiving. Uh, after Turkey Day. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes if you get a special permit. Yeah. You can extend it into, the, into December. Yeah. It's like, it's like ice fishing. I don't know nothing about ice fishing, but I know a lot about craps hunting. Crap season just basically just winds down right at Thanksgiving, pretty much. It, it slows down. If, Like I say, if you got a special permit, you can run right on into New Year's. <laughs> yeah. I mean, because, because I mean, you know, I got a birthday and I got a birthday in December and then I've got an anniversary in December. And so, you know, sometimes we'll, we'll, we will, we will extend crap season all the way to New Year's Eve. Oh, were a lot of people laughing about that. Yeah. Dude, that was actually pretty funny. Ed. I thought it was funny. But you have basically given it a season. Yeah. That, it's like a season, <laughs> dude. We should make, we should make licenses, dude, with lanyards, <laughs> right? Like, like your craps license. The official, the official casino tears. Yeah. <laughs> Craps season license. We should make that. Yeah, we should. Absolutely. The craps hunting license, dude. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. That, nobody else has got one. Craps license. <laughs> you have your license. You can just pull it right out. You know, it's like your. It's got your handle on it, dude. Stamp it. Yeah. It, it will say, it'll say 10 ton is number one. You're, you are allowed to go play. Yeah. Let's do that. Let's do it. That's a great idea. Yeah, that'll be so funny. I agree. I agree. It's your own official, your own official craps hunting. Yeah, endorsed by us. Yeah, and we're like the fishing game bureau or whatever that's yeah. called, right? Commission. Yeah. Yeah. Crap season. Your crap season license. Get your own official crap season license. Stamp it. It'll be awesome. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. I think we're onto something weird, but yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, dude, that's so funny. You, like, <laughs> because no one has this shit, dude. And that's what's funny about it. So, okay, everybody, everybody out there listening, be sure and get your official Casino Tears craps season license. If you don't have it, you're subject to being kicked out of a casino at any given moment when playing craps. But if you've got it, you've got a lifetime privilege of playing craps. As long as you have your official casino tiers, craps hunting license. license. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed this podcast and we'll tell all of your fellow craps playing friends about it. Please follow casino tiers on Apple podcast, Spotify, or your favorite podcast app. If you like the show, please rate it five stars and leave a review. The best and most fun way to contact us would be to call and leave a message on our official Casino Tears vent line, 229-NO7. You can also email us at no7 at casinotears.com. New episodes drop weekly every Tuesday. And lastly, to help support this podcast, you can visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash casinotears. On behalf of Roll to Win Craps from Alabama and 10 Ton is number one from Las Vegas, thanks for listening.